Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am discussing my unpopular, controversial skincare opinions. And stay tuned for the end of the video for our very first product evaluation. So the first unpopular opinion that I have about skincare is that a lack of active ingredients doesn't necessarily mean a waste of time. So I got inspired to actually make this entire video about my unpopular skincare opinions because someone sent me a TikTok of an esthetician who basically said that brands like CeraVe or Cetaphil are not bad for skin but they're also not good for skin because they don't contain you know these like high performance actives she said that there are better ingredients to be putting on your skin and these brands are basically a waste of time I really do think that we are becoming really obsessed with the idea of these like high performance skincare ingredients and we're really expecting a lot of our skincare products to contain tons and tons of actives. But in my opinion, boring ingredients are equally important or maybe even more important than actives. So what I mean by boring ingredients are ingredients like uh, glycerin, dimethicone, ceramides. They may not sound sexy, but they do have an extremely important purpose for hydrating the skin moisturizing the skin and protecting the skin barrier which is ultimately very very critical for skin health so don't be fooled by this more is more mindset when it comes to skincare more is absolutely not more you need to be balancing actives with more reparative or soothing or moisturizing ingredients the next unpopular opinion that I have is that clean beauty is total marketing BS. Now, this is going to hurt some feelings because people feel very strongly about clean beauty. I'm here to tell you that clean beauty as it exists right now is nothing more than just a marketing ploy that companies use to hook buyers. It 100% is a marketing strategy in order to perpetuate fear mongering of chemicals. Everything is a chemical. Your lavender essential oil is just as much as a chemical as say phenoxyethanol, which is a preservative. As someone who studied chemical engineering in university and therefore took a ton of chemistry classes, I am super frustrated by the rhetoric that clean beauty companies perpetuate in otherizing skincare ingredients. So basically what they'll do is they'll say, you know, our skincare is formulated without this and without this and without that. And basically what that's doing is it's kind of insinuating to the buyer that this, this, and that ingredient are harmful. In reality, most of the ingredients that clean beauty companies exclude from their ingredients list are totally fine. I did a video a while back explaining exactly what clean beauty at Sephora means because they have a very strict ingredient call out list saying we don't formulate with any of these ingredients. And so in that video, I go through the ingredients one by one and I tell you what I think about them. So if you want to watch that video, I will link it down below. I am so tired of saying this, but natural does not equal better. Poison ivy is natural, but you absolutely do not want to be rubbing it on your face. There are bad natural ingredients and there are bad synthetic ingredients, but synthetic doesn't necessarily mean evil and natural doesn't necessarily mean good but you know above all else formulation matters so much i've said this before and i'll continue saying it over and over again but the dose makes the poison so you can have you know really small concentrations of a very very dangerous chemical and it will be fine in personal care products so putting 100 percent denatured alcohol on your skin probably bad but putting denatured alcohol in your skin when it's in a well formulated skincare product probably fine. Which leads me to my next point in that alcohol is not bad in skincare. Alcohol has become so, so demonized in skincare. And I think it's because there's this one skincare company that has really pushed the agenda that alcohol is super bad for skin. So it's true that 100% pure alcohol is very drying and very damaging. And yes, it will 100% kill cells in a Petri dish. But also cells in a Petri dish can be killed by practicing practically anything. Okay, trust me, I worked in a biotech research lab for many years and I have accidentally killed my cells a bunch of times. It's very, very easy to kill cells in vitro. That being said, in vivo studies and in vitro studies are vastly different. So in vivo refers to studies that are done within an entire living organism, whereas in vitro studies refer to doing studies on cells outside of the living organism. So in vitro studies are a good starting point to examine how certain substances affect cells, but they are not the end all be all. You have to keep in mind that isolated cells from an organism behave vastly different from the cells in an entire organism. 
which kind of alludes to a topic that I wanted to talk about, uh, which is that you're probably reading scientific studies wrong, but I'm not ready to talk about that yet. I did a whole video breaking down the exact purpose of alcohol and skincare, it being a penetration enhancer, it being a texture enhancer. It has many, many, many important purposes in skincare when it's in a well-formulated product. If you wanna watch the video, I will link that down below. But like I said earlier in this video, the dose makes a poison. So while yes, putting alcohol on your skin in just straight alcohol, 100% ethyl alcohol, that will be super, super damaging to your skin. But if it's in a well-formulated skincare product, you really have nothing to worry about. So gone are the days where we look at ingredients lists and see alcohol and scream and run in the opposite direction because it really has to do with formulation. Formulation tells half the story, ingredients tell the other half of the story. You cannot have one without the other. They really do mesh together and play a very important role in how the ingredients react with each other and react with the skin. I think it's unfortunate that alcohol has become so demonized and actually if you look at some of my older videos, I definitely took it out on alcohol saying that it was like a very evil ingredient when in reality it's really not. My last unpopular skincare opinion is that you're probably not wearing enough sunscreen and I am one of those people who tries their best to wear as much sunscreen as possible as often as possible but I understand that we're all human and sometimes you know you forget to wear sunscreen you don't apply enough sunscreen but really at this point in time where we sit currently with sunscreen technology, there's kind of no excuse for not wearing sunscreen to the best of your abilities. I hate to be that person who constantly nags on and on and on about the importance of sunscreen, but it truly is so important. Sunscreen is really the number one best anti-aging measure that you can possibly take within your own human power. Not to mention that your risk of melanoma significantly decreases if you use sunscreen properly. You have to be applying two milligrams per centimeter squared to get the advertised SPF value on the bottle of your sunscreen. And when in doubt, apply in layers. I have personally found that applying sunscreen in layers really does a better job of applying enough sunscreen as opposed to trying to apply a ton of sunscreen all in one go. So if you're kind of struggling with the whole two milligrams per centimeter squared thing, I suggest applying one layer of sunscreen, letting it dry completely, and then going in with another layer of sunscreen. And also my other tip is to use sunscreens that feel really pleasant on the skin. I suggest going for sunscreens that have a very thin serum-like texture to them or going with sunscreens that feel like moisturizers. So my favorite sunscreens that kind of mimic those textures are the Misha Essence Sun Milk. That one is very alcohol-based, which makes it very thin and very lightweight. Um, a moisturizer texture is the uh, Cosarx Aloe Soothing Sun Cream. That is a really gorgeous moisturizer feeling sunscreen. It's actually my current favorite. And a sunscreen that kind of straddles the line between the two is the Crave Beauty Beet Shield. That one has the texture of like condensed milk, so it's still quite runny, but it's very, very moisturizing. Finding your perfect sunscreen might take time, but I do think it's absolutely worth the investment because once you do find your perfect sunscreen, you're definitely increasing your chances of applying a lot of sunscreen on your skin and therefore enough sunscreen on your skin, protecting your skin from UV rays. So those were just some of my unpopular skincare opinions. I know that I have a lot more that I could get into, but I didn't want this video to be like 45 minutes long. So if you wanna see a part two to this video where I talk about even more of my unpopular skincare opinions, then definitely comment down below and give this video a thumbs up so that I know to film it. And now we're gonna do a very quick ingredients evaluation of a product that you guys suggested in the comments. So basically what I'm going to start doing on my channel is incorporating these very quick ingredients evaluations into the end of some of my... Pepper, what are you doing? So basically on my channel, I'm going to start incorporating these very quick ingredients evaluations of skincare products that you guys suggest because I do get a ton of questions about, you know, what do you think of this product? What do you think of the ingredients of that product? And I can't answer everyone because it's a lot. And for that exact reason, I started doing skincare routine consultations. But if you don't have like an entire skincare routine that you want me to evaluate, you can just comment on any of my videos with the product that you're curious about. And at the end of the video, I will pick a comment and evaluate the ingredients of that product. So today's product evaluation is the Stratia Skin Gold. So this product is exactly what I was referring to in my first 
point of this video in that actives do not necessarily equal you know superiority so when i looked at the ingredients list i was very pleasantly surprised it doesn't contain exfoliating actives doesn't contain any sort of you know active ingredient to it. it looks like it's very moisturizing very reparative very soothing um so i have the ingredients list right here um and the more that i look at it the more i fall in love with this product so basically it contains niacinamide. This is a really, I guess this is technically an active, but it's not an exfoliating active, which you can potentially overdo. So niacinamide is a really great antioxidant that helps with um, you know, excess sebum production. It takes down the sebum production a little bit. It helps with pores. It helps with fine lines and wrinkles. It helps with boosting up ceramide production in the skin, helps with hyperpigmentation. It truly helps with so many different things in the skin. So niacinamide is probably my favorite antioxidant, dare I say. This product also contains a really beautiful blend of oils that are pretty high in linoleic acid, so they're going to be quite lightweight but still very moisturizing on the skin. I also see, you know, panthenol, glycerin, urea, uh, sodium hyaluronate. These are all really great humectants, so that's really nice to hear because it's in addition to it being very moisturizing from all the oils, it's also going to be very hydrating. This also contains green tea extract, which is another great antioxidant. So there, there are truly like a number of really great antioxidants out there, but green tea extract is an antioxidant that is very, very well documented. And therefore, you know, in my opinion, it has the most evidence of it being very, very efficacious on the skin. This also contains ceramides, which is so great because ceramides are a component of the skin barrier in addition to cholesterol, which is also an ingredient in here. So it's going to be very nourishing and very repaired to the skin barrier, which I think is just great. So overall, I love the ingredients list here. I do think I would have to try it for myself to determine if it is, you know, as hydrating and as moisturizing as the ingredients list suggests that it is. But if I wasn't up to my eyeballs in new skincare oils, I would absolutely run to buy this um, particular product because it really does look very, very promising. All right, so that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending this time with me. If you have any skincare products that you want me to evaluate in a future video, then definitely comment them down below. And also comment your unpopular skincare opinions. Let's talk about it. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and spending this time with me. Have a beautiful week, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.